Through this activity, we have explored the working of an optical fiber. We have compared how light travels differently through a simple straw compared to how it travels down an optical fiber. The optical fiber is able to hold the light in and allows it to exit through the other end, while in the case of a straw, a good amount of light leaks through the sides of the straw and the remaining light comes out at the end of the straw. We also observe that on bending the straw, the light does not bend, rather is diffused away. In the optical fiber, however, the light stays inside the fiber and only exits at the end of the fiber when the fiber is bent or even knotted. One can try a variation of this experiment by sending bright light through a covered water container. When we pour the water from the container, we will observe that the light will bend along with the path of water. This was the first experimental proof of total internal reflection. We can try to disrupt and restart the electrical connection, turn the light on or off in a rhythm. This will mimic how data is transmitted through the fiber in binary code, which is zeros and ones. There were many people whose contributions culminated into the use of fiber optic cables as we know them today. In the 1870s, John Tyndall showed that light could move along with water even when water is poured, demonstrating the phenomenon of total internal reflection. Smaller contributions were made by scientists in the interim time, but finally in the 1950s, Narendra Kapani and Harold Hopkins used light to transport the image of a picture through a pipe made of thousands of glass fibers. Taking this work further, in 1957, three university students at the University of Michigan were able to make a gastroscope, which is an endoscope used to look inside the stomach. Soon after, in 1960, Charles Cow and George Hockham made the discovery that pure glass, when used to transport signals, would make long-range fiber optic communication possible. For this, Professor Cow was awarded the 2009 Nobel Prize in Physics. In 1977, the first fiber optic telephone cable was laid, and here started the use of this brilliant fiber optic cable technology. In 1988, the first transatlantic fiber optic telephone cable was laid between Britain, France, and the US. In today's date, fiber optic cable technology has almost obliterated the old method of networking using metallic wires. Its applications lie in numerous fields from military to dentistry, internet and telephone, surgery and decorations, etc. Some scientific terms. An optical fiber is a flexible fiber made of very thin glass or plastic through which light signals can be sent with very little loss of strength. A fiber optic cable is a collection of optical fibers used to transmit information in the form of light over long distances. Each optical fiber is coated with a protective layer which is suitable to the environment in which it will be deployed. The refractive index is the ratio of velocity of light in a vacuum to the velocity of light in the particular medium. It determines how the light propagates through that medium. Cladding is a lower refractive index material that covers the core fiber in which the light travels. Its purpose is to keep the light from leaking and to keep it inside the fiber. An electromagnetic or EM wave a wave consisting of oscillating electric and magnetic fields like radio waves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays. Infrared waves that fall in the EM spectrum which are longer in wavelength than visible light and shorter in wavelength than radio waves. These waves transfer heat energy. An endoscope is an instrument which can be sent inside the body to view inside one of its internal cavities. Students must be familiar with the concepts of reflection and refraction. They should be aware about some principles of light, for example, rectilinear propagation, speed of light, etc. They should be familiar with basics of electromagnetic radiation. They must be able to carry out simple motor skills like cutting and connecting wires. Reflection is the phenomenon of a wave being thrown back from a surface. The law of reflection states that the angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. Angles are measured relative to the perpendicular at the point where the light hits the surface. 
Refraction is the change in the direction of propagation of a wave due to a change in its medium of transmission. The velocity of the wave changes on entering a different medium, but its frequency remains the same. If the wave hits a new medium at an angle other than zero degrees from normal, this phenomenon is observed. We can compare this to walking on the beach, then entering the sea and walking in shallower water, which is harder to do, so we will probably walk slower. Different conditions of reflection and refraction when a ray moves from higher refractive index to lower refractive index medium is shown in the diagram below. When a ray of light hits the surface of a second medium at zero degrees to the normal, the ray travels straight through the second medium without getting bent. When the ray is incident on the surface of the second medium at an angle close to zero to the normal, but less than the critical angle, it is refracted when it travels into the second medium and part of it is reflected back. When the ray is incident at an angle higher than the previous angle, but less than the critical angle, the ray of light is refracted at a higher angle into the second medium and more of it is reflected back. Sometimes when a ray of light hits the surface of the next medium at an angle of incidence greater than a particular angle, which is a critical angle, the ray is completely reflected and no part of it is refracted. This happens when the following two conditions are met. A. The ray of light is moving from a medium of higher refractive index to a medium of lower refractive index. And B. The angle of incidence of the light is greater than the critical angle. Snell's law of refraction is stated as n1 sin theta1 equals n2 sin theta2, where n1 is the refractive index of medium 1, n2 is the refractive index of medium 2, theta1 is the angle of incidence, and theta2 the angle of refraction. Light can travel through an optical fiber for long distances due to the fact that it is kept inside the fiber with the phenomenon of total internal reflection. The light ray cannot leak out of the fiber and is propagated over long distances with very little loss. For this purpose, the cladding or covering material of the fiber is made of a substance with lower refractive index than the inner core fiber. This is why an optic fiber is very thin, so that the angle of incidence by design always remains greater than the critical angle. A fiber optic cable is when many optical fibers are bundled together to carry many times more information than a single optical fiber. A fiber optic cable may have anywhere from two strands to a couple hundred strands. Each strand is about one tenth in thickness of the normal human hair but can carry 25,000 phone calls at a time. So a fiber optic cable can carry a few million calls simultaneously. Light travels inside an optic fiber at about two-thirds of its speed in vacuum because the material has a refractive index of 1.5. Light can travel in one of two ways inside an optical fiber. Single mode, where light moves straight through the optical fiber. In this kind, the core is very thin, about 5 to 10 microns, with a cladding that is 10 times its thickness. There is a plastic coating outside the cladding which is twice the thickness of the cladding and the coating is surrounded by strengthening fibers made from a tough material like Kevlar. Multimode optical fiber in this kind of optical fiber light may travel in a straight line through the fiber or it may follow one of many different paths. The core in such a fiber is many times the thickness of that in a single mode optical fiber and multimode optical fiber is used to convey information over relatively shorter distances than the single mode fiber, like connecting computer networks together. The light in optical fibers used commercially is generally one of three wavelengths 650 nanometers, 850 nanometers, and 1300 nanometers. This falls in the very red to near infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. The reason for this is that the higher the wavelength of light, the less the attenuation or the decay of the light through the optical fiber. If one were to choose wavelengths much above this, then the background noise becomes a hindering factor. 
The optical fiber used in an endoscope is special in the way that the signals it transmits are analog. That is, there are two optical fibers, one which goes from the eye into the body cavity and the other that leads from the cavity back up to the eye. The first fiber provides the light from an external source to illuminate the body cavity and through the second the image is relayed back to the eye of the observer. However, the fiber optic cables used to carry telephone signals do so in binary form. These are used to carry data over long distances, whereas in case of endoscopes, information is carried over short distances. Optical fibers are used in telecommunications to send information over long distances with minimum loss of data. If we use high-speed internet, it is no doubt available to us through optical fibers. Optical fibers are also used in endoscopes to look inside the human bodies at places inaccessible without otherwise cutting open the body. In medicine, minor surgeries can also be carried out in a minimally invasive manner with the help of a CCD or video camera attached at the end of the endoscope to view the required location with a secondary tube for carrying out the procedure. Endoscopes are also used, like tiny telescopes, to look inside complicated machines or buildings into locations which would otherwise not be possible to see. One can use endoscopes to identify faults inside these big instruments. Industrial endoscopes are known as borescopes or fiberscopes. Optical fibers are increasingly being used to connect military bases because they are lightweight, cheaper than expensive copper wires and most importantly are robust against electronic interference from the enemy in the form of interception or jamming attacks. The applications of this elegant technology are numerous and it has quietly improved the quality of our lives. Light can be used to improve communication and broadcasting, diagnostics and medicine and technology for the military and other purposes. Optical fibers currently carry 99% of the information of the internet and 99% of all international communications traffic and this is just the testimony to one aspect of the contribution of optical fibers. Medicine continues to refine and expand the use of optical fibers. We can expect to find optical fibers used in more and more applications throughout the world as time goes on. See you later.